Hello, this is Nicholas O'Brien, and I am going to be walking through uh, doing some interior UV design and applying materials and textures to our Pro Builder game object, and also starting to look at how to do some interior lighting uh, as well. So we're going to get to a point where we have a scene that looks somewhat like this. Uh, I might go to another room to kind of showcase what I'm working with here, um, but I'm going to be walking through these steps um, so that we get to a place that looks somewhat like this. Great. Okay, so we had a scene that looked something like this uh, originally when we last left off. And you can see here that I have, you know, my base level that has all of the components that I need in terms of faces and components like vertex and edges and so on and so forth. And I also have a directional light in the scene. Um, I'm going to leave the directional light for now because what I want to do is that I want to start working on just applying a material with an additional texture to the background here. So for our intents and purposes, we're going to be using some materials and textures that we can uh, easily pull from a, a really nice handy resource that's called Share Textures. This resource is uh, really handy for us to use really high quality, what would be called PBR based textures, which contain both color information, height map, normal maps, uh, metallic maps, uh, roughness maps. They contain a lot of really helpful texture information, which we can go into more detail in person when we meet. But for now, what's important to understand and know is that we're going to be using all of this texture information and loading that into a material. So the important distinction between a texture and a material is that a material is basically what the surface is going to, you know, the surface components are going to look like. So if I create a new material, and I'll just name this kind of wall test, something like that, I'm going to put that actually in my models folder because that's where I want my materials to go, and maybe I'll, again, move that into my materials folder here. So this material contains all of the kind of actual material information of my object, okay? So when I say material and I stress material, that has to do with kind of shininess, reflectivity, uh, the matte quality, uh, and certainly the, the color information as well. Um, so if you look in the material settings here, you can see on the base map, right, this is just a kind of generic white material. And I could certainly apply this to some of my uh, objects here, or excuse me, some of my surfaces here. But I'm going to actually use a built-in tool within ProBuilder that actually allows me to be very selective and very meticulous and purposeful with how I want to assign my materials to the components of my Pro Builder object. So I'm going to add two uh, kind of sub menus, if you will, from Pro Builder to my overall scene here that I can use to easily access uh, that stuff. So one of them is going to be the UV editor, and that's over here in the Pro Builder side. I'm going to click UV editor. You'll see this kind of window pop up, and I'm going to arrange this in my scene here so that I kind of build this on the bottom of my screen. And then I'm going to also add the material editor. And I'm going to drag and drop that next to my UV editor. Cool. So the UV editor is as it says, right? It's an editor that allows me to uh, both select and edit my UVs. So if I select my kind of base level, you can actually see all of the UV maps of this space. So I'm going to actually go with a different wall than the wall that I had assigned before. And I'm going to map the UVs of this wall here. And so I'm just hitting shift left click to select those. Um, I can also go up to the top display and go into orthographic mode. And if I if I wanted to select multiple um, surfaces, I can do that by you know, left clicking and creating a boundary around the surfaces that I want to select. But I want to make sure that in my Pro Builder settings in the rect uh, kind of this set drag mode, you can see here that I want to have complete. Okay, 
So I'm going to click and drag along that wall. And then when I kind of pivot back around, and I go back into perspective mode, you can see that I've selected now that entire wall. Okay, so once I've selected this wall, you can actually see that I have the UVs or the 2D representation of the 3D space selected in my UV editor. And I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, pull those out because I, I just want to be more selective and understand, you know, those UVs separate from the rest of my scene. So I can go ahead and kind of pull these out and isolate these so that when I start applying a material to them, I can easily reselect them in the UV editor, right? like so, and I can select those surfaces that I want to apply that material to. So I'm going to do that really quickly, and I'm going to uh, create, I'm going to apply this wall test material to this wall. And so maybe just to kind of prove that this is, you know, much different from the rest of my base materials, I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, change the, the base color, or the base map color of that, go back and select this. And I will select those UVs again. And then while I have these UVs selected here or the surfaces selected in my scene, I'm going to go to Material Editor. And I'm going to look for a material that I want to assign here. So I can select by using kind of my little selection nozzle here. And I'll go ahead and search for Wall. And I can find Test. And now once I've selected that material that I want to apply here, I can just go ahead and click the apply button right underneath underneath that quick material. And so now I have that red material, that bright red material applied to the UVs of that object. And I'm, I'm just going to kind of turn this down a little bit because it's just pretty intense red. OK, great. So that's really quickly how we can use the UV editor to our advantage really quickly to be really specifically select different, you know, areas in our map uh, areas in our, our, excuse me, in our pro builder object here and assign a, a particular material to those walls. Now, like I said before, we want to be maybe a little bit more interesting than just adding different colors here. So we're going to also add a, a, a texture to this wall. So again, I'm going to go back to this helpful resource called Share Textures and download a very simple brick pattern. OK, so I found this wall stone pattern here, and you'll see that it contains a lot of it contains the color information, the ambient occlusion information, the displacement, the normal map, the uh, specular map, and I think it should also contain the roughness. And I'm going to click on this download button here. And I actually I don't need a 4K texture that's going to actually bog down my loading time, probably. So I'm just going to select my 1K option here. And so that will download a zip file. And what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to open up the zip file and import it into my project. OK, so you can see that I have a textures folder within my kind of models uh, folder in my project here. I can kind of expand this a little bit so that we can see it easier. And I have that stone wall. Um, oh, excuse me. I have wall stone. Excuse. That's the one that we were using. And again, I have the diffuse, the displacement, the normal, the specular, and a lot of really great stuff here. So I'm going to go back to where I had that material and select uh, that wall test material and go and then select uh, the folder where my wall stone is and start to drag and drop the images, the kind of clips, or excuse me, the thumbnails here, and drag them into the squares that they're assigned with. So and let's turn this back to that kind of just default white that we have here. Um, I can put in, I don't need the displacement actually, but I'll bring in the normal map. You're probably going to get a warning here that says this image has not been assigned a normal map, so you can actually fix that just automatically does that for you. We can certainly uh, put in the, uh, I would say the displacement goes into the height map. If we want that. We can put in the ambient occlusion as well. Okay. And I guess I can put in my specular into the metallic map if I really wanted to. Um, you know, it's not this is not going to be very metallic, so I can probably just go ahead and bump that down. All right, 
So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and just take a look at how this texture looks on the wall. And, and kind of by default, it looks not too bad. I'm going to refocus my camera here. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, I can go in and then kind of tweak this a little bit. So let's get that material again. You can go in here and, and maybe increase the height map a little bit, you know, bump that up. You could certainly bump up the normal map just a little bit. What that's doing is that it's kind of simulating a little bit more ridges or edges in this, you know, kind of giving, illustrating a little bit more simulated depth or bumpiness to, to that texture. Um, okay, and that looks okay. Now, the thing that kind of starts to jump out at me right away is that I can really tell, you know, where the, the quote unquote seams are on this texture it just feels a little bit too uniform to me. So what I could do is that I could go back into the UV editor by just selecting the object. It should automatically bring up the UVs down here and I'll go into my surface mode, select those surfaces. And what I could do is that I can start to reposition this in the grid to, you know, maybe offset that pattern of where that, that tiling has happened. And what I can also do now is that I could modify the scale or the size of this UV map to better match, um, you know, the pattern of my bricks here. So I can either right now it's set to one to one, but if I go two by two, you know, that might be a little bit better. It seems like those bricks are a little bit too large now. So maybe I want to go somewhere kind of in between. So I can kind of say 0.75 and 0.75 on the X and Y tiling. And try to apply that. Let's see. Not sure why that didn't work. Zero point seven five. Zero point seven five. Oh, there we go. I just kind of needed to reactivate this a little bit. Um, and okay, that looks okay. Again, I can still kind of tell the tiling is. You know, I can kind of tell where the tiling is here, and it might be just that this is a somewhat older um, texture. I feel like that the tiling of some of those earlier textures, unshared textures, are just maybe a little bit too obvious, but this isn't going to be too distracting to me. And in fact, I, I think that this is okay for what I need. All right, so this actually looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is that now I'm going to uh, modify the rest of my scene here so that I can really easily um, create a, a much more kind of dynamic interior lighting scenario. Now, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is that when I delete my directional light, you'll actually notice that, you know, I get, you know, kind of much more darker scene. I'm still getting some ambient lighting from the lighting settings in my scene. And we can go ahead and look at those lighting settings really quickly. If I go to window rendering lighting, I'll go ahead and snap that up here. Now, if I go to the environment, I'm getting, you know, a little bit of that, right, intensity multiplier, just by, you know, having the environmental lighting of the skybox affect my overall scene, you know, but I could you know, very easily put this back down to one and I'm getting a really kind of dark space. Um, so this is, if you, if you haven't gotten a space that looks kind of this dark or you feel like you're still getting a lot of interior lighting, what I would recommend you to do is to go ahead and click on this generate lighting down here. And what that will do is that it will kind of reprocess the lighting situation that you have going on in your scene so that it better reflects, you know, your lighting settings that you have set up in your scene. So it still is pretty dark in here, but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to ensure that any light that I might, you know, include or add to my overall uh, scene, it's not going to kind of, for lack of a better term, leak into my Pro Builder. Because even though we kind of built this as a solid object, there are going to be times where you're going to find that the light is going to leak potentially around the edges. And that's going to be particularly the case when you, for instance, add a directional light, you know, to your scene, you might see that you're going to get 
a little bit more leaking than you than you would want normally. So I'm just kind of recalculating or regenerating my lights. And again, you know, I, I don't like the way that the that this directional light kind of looks in my scene. And because it looks like the scene is outdoors, you know, and I, I really don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that directional light again. And this kind of interior lighting looks a little bit better. I still might want to turn down the intensity multiplier in my environmental lighting settings. And I'm actually going to eventually uh, change this information even more to make the interior lighting a little bit more believable. But for now, let's keep that as is and create that box around the entirety of my uh, scene so that I can ensure that I'm getting no light leaks. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to zoom out entirely. And I'm going to go up to the top orthographic view. And I'm going to add very simply a game object. I'm going to add a cube to this game object. And I'll just name this outer cube. And I'm going to scale this up along the X and the Z. And I just need to realign this a little bit. So now that, oh, I need to scale this up along the Y. So that basically I'm encasing the entirety of my interior space kind of within, you can kind of think about this as like an artificial skybox, right? Um, and what this is going to do again is that it's going to prevent any potential light leaks coming into your scene from any external lighting scenarios, okay? Or uh, un any unnecessary bounces or any unnecessary shadows that you might not want to have, okay? So I'm going to refocus my camera so that I just make it a little bit easier. I'm going to go back into perspective mode. And what I want to do is that I want to add a light in the scene to make, you know, the interior feel a little bit more, you know, like an interior that it has interior lighting. So I'm going to uh, right click in my hierarchy and I'm going to add a light. And let's first, we're going to experiment with a couple of different lights here, but I'm going to first experiment with a point light. And when I activate that point light, I'm going to try to move this into, you know, a little bit more of the center of the room, All right? And that looks pretty good to me. I have a little bit of a center of the room here. You know, I could be more precise and, and try to think about how I align this up, but I think that that looks okay, actually. Okay. And what I want to do is that I want to just kind of like look at the settings here to give my lighting a little bit more of a dynamic range. So I'm going to go into the inspector while I have my point light selected and I'm going to keep it on point light. I'm going to go instead of real time, I'm going to go to baked lighting and I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit, maybe to something like three. And then I'm going to in increase the range to be maybe double what I had before. So something like 20 it seems pretty good. So I'm getting kind of a nice even light kind of everywhere in my scene. And you know, that looks pretty good. And I also want to do is that I also want to make sure that I have some shadows turned on. So I'm going to turn on hard shadows. Okay, so that now, right, when I have you know, this light in this room, I'm getting shadows in the hallway, obviously going right so that those shadows are obviously going in, you know, the direction that the light is kind of shining from. Cool. So this now is giving me a nice even kind of look to this room. Um, but the problem that I'm going to have is that when I start bringing this, you know, if I want to kind of simulate light that's kind of actually coming from the ceiling, when I start trying to bring this light up, right, to that simulate that look, I'm starting to get right a really obnoxious hot spot, right? This really bright white light at the top of my scene. And so what I want to do is that I want to change this lighting setup to be instead of a point light, which is kind of lighting from every single direction in my scene to something that's more like a spotlight. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back up to the top. And I'm going to change the type of this light from a point light to a directional, excuse me, to a spotlight, excuse me. And I'm going to 
change the rotation of this right along the x axis. And I'm going to change the inner and outer spot of this so that I'm getting a more kind of wide breadth of this. You can kind of think about this inner and outer being how much kind of fall off you want this light to have. And I can actually also decrease the range of this so that, right, I want the spot to just kind of be affecting this room. And then, of course, because a spot is not unidirectional, it's, or excuse me, not multi directional, um, I'm going to then also increase the intensity of this to get that that nice even look a little bit more. And maybe I want to come back here and, you know, widen that range. I could widen this range too, even a little bit more. Cool. So I can bring this up. Okay, great. So now I have a nice evenly lit, right, room. I could kind of increase the indirect multiplier here if I wanted to, you know, try to increase the range even a little bit more so that I get even more even lighting in this space. I'm starting to get a little bit of what I would call kind of like haloing here. So I might want to just decrease the intensity there or increase, sorry, maybe soften the inner and outer edge. Okay, cool. So now I've got these, you know, nice shadows that are happening in the corners, right? I'm getting some nice midtones, right, along the edge, and I'm getting, you know, some pretty consistent highlights. I could still maybe increase, excuse me, not the range, but increase the intensity of this just a little bit so that those highlights are feeling a little bit more bright. And again, the shadows are being a little bit more rich. Okay, cool. So that's going to be, uh, you know, kind of the quick demonstration of how to do some really easy interior lighting within our scene. And again, just for kind of safe measure, what I'm going to do here is that once I've kind of set up the lighting that I think, you know, looks pretty good, I'm then going to click generate lighting to just make sure that all of this is being baked in the way that I want it to. Cool. So that I get, you know, consistent lighting in my scene that then feels you know, that I'm getting the, the effect that I want. Great. So now I get something that feels really rich, right? Has a lot of really interesting dynamic lighting. And I'm actually just going to go back and make sure that the lighting that I'm getting from this point light, yeah, I, I reset this to actually to be real time because I just feel like it's a little bit more consistent. It gives me a little bit more idea of how to have those rich shadows. Cool. All right. So uh, hopefully this short little demonstration gives you some indication of how to use the UV editor within Pro Builder so that you can isolate particular areas of your um, Pro Builder kind of scenery and apply materials and textures to them using the material editor and uh, using some nice available uh, free assets for us uh, to get some really good textures, you know, to be applied to your scene. All right, looking forward to seeing what y'all are working on and uh, can't wait to see how these uh, projects and levels turn out. Take care, be well, bye-bye.